Hello everyone, my name is Michael Jacobs from the Michael Jacobs Explosive Golf School. Today I'm going to give you a quick little video on using the FlightScope Trajectory Optimizer. So if you log into www.flightscope.com, you'll be able to see all their products, ideas, and things of that nature. And on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see Trajectory Optimizer. So if we click on that, It'll take a second to load up, initialize, and now we'll have what looks like a nice little fairway screen, something similar to what you would see on these on the flight scope screens on the actual units. Not exactly the same, but something close. And you'll have two different viewpoints. Here we're looking straight out towards the driving range, so to speak, and here we can take a look more of a bird's eye view. Uh, you'll see a whole bunch of little dashboard here and a whole bunch of parameters that you could plug in and get an idea of different uh, possible things that can happen to the trajectory of your golf ball. So let's say you took a club fitting session or you went and took a lesson and they had a, a flight scope handy and you got your parameters and you went home and you say, all right, what if I, my parameters were different? What would happen? Well, first we're, we're going to choose an imperial method uh, here. This would be more in the United States, miles per hour, degrees, yards, degrees, revolutions per minute. Okay, so launch speed, the initial ball speed. Let's say I'm just an everyday golfer and let's say my initial ball speed was 130 miles per hour. Let's say I'm hitting my driver and the report I got from my flight scope session was I was launching my driver at 17 degrees. Uh, we're just picking some arbitrary numbers here folks. Uh, let's say it reached a maximum height of 28 yards in, in the air. I was hitting a fade, I, you know, let's say this person was hitting a fade, and let's say the spin axis on the ball tilted 14 degrees. So it's going to be quite a fade, and let's say the spin RPM is 4,000. So let's display the driver shot here. I'm sure some of you have seen this type of shot when you're playing golf. This will give us exactly what would take place with all these parameters plugged in. Shot went 198 yards, launched at 17 degrees, 130 mile an hour ball speed. There's the back spin and side spin. You could see that the spin, by having 4,000 RPMs, was a combination of uh, side and back to reach that 4,000. Uh, but the ball will only it only has one spin axis that it tilts on height and the time of the flight. So let's say you review or I'm going to take some instruction on some type of uh, you know, live instruction or participate in some websites to help my golf game. Let's say you go to my forum xgolfschool.com and you want to work on uh, improving this. And we give you some ideas and things of that nature to straighten out that spin axis. Let's say now you're not hitting a fade anymore. Let's say now it becomes more of a draw. Let's say we're hitting all things considered and now it becomes a negative four degree spin axis let's display the shot you can see that the distance relatively the same um, different launch characteristic by hitting a draw but you can see everybody says oh a draw goes further and things that, things of that nature but you can see when the parameters stay the same just because it's a draw doesn't really change how much further it goes but let's say we change this launch right here and let's say we're able to lower the launch angle to let's say 14 degrees and we're able to lower the spin RPMs to 3000 and let's say we're still hitting a little bit of a draw a six degree tilt in the spin axis let's display the shot so you can see I've changed the launch parameters a little bit and you can see we only picked up three or four yards so there's very little yardage gain uh, when I'm just adjusting those two things. But now let's say I was able to do things to increase my centeredness of hit. And we increase the launch speed to 139 miles per hour. So the ball is now leaving at 139 miles per hour. 20 yard gain. So you could see launch speed is very important. Now what is the launch speed? Well, it's, it's going to be directly related to center face contact and obviously speed of the club head. But the better that we can make center face contact is more important than hitting draws or fades or anything like that. It's more important that you hit on the center of the face. And when you play and plug all these parameters, you'll see that increases and decreases in ball speed are going to be your biggest thing. Let's say now we put this around a PGA Tour average 
ball speed. I think the PGA Tour average ball speed is around 160, 170. Let's say it's 170. Let's say it launches at 13 degrees to reach an altitude of 30 yards. Let's say it's a dead straight ball at 2,500 RPMs. This will give us an idea of pretty close to some type of PGA Tour parameters. There's our shot launching at 13 degrees. You can see it in the air. No side spin, dead straight ball, 293 yards carry. Now you can see here there's a lineage of all the shots so that it kind of gives you an idea of exactly what's taking place. Let's switch to this view and now let's say the launch speed really decreased at 125 mile per hour launch but everything else stayed the same. 183 yards over a hundred yard loss in distance so you can see things to increase your initial launch speed are really important so the flight scope trajectory optimizer gives you a chance to plug and play different parameters uh, hopefully as time goes on this trajectory optimizer will include maybe some features of the club head or things like that let's hope for that but it's up to the people at flight scope but i just wanted to share this with you because i think it's important it was introduced at the flight scope convention that we hosted this year and i think this will be a nice step for people to use the website to improve their golf game and their ball flight this is michael jacobs from the explosive golf school have a great day